In the book of Enoch, the watchers are those who left heaven and made it with human women. But were they always conceived as such? In this video, I'll be exploring the historical roots that the watchers may have been based on. I'll be taking a look at the first book within the book of Enoch, the book of the watchers. It's important to understand that the book of the watchers, as well as the entire book of Enoch, was written as propaganda. In other words, the author took an oral tradition about the watchers and manipulated it to fit his own agenda. It's possible to isolate what the author changed from the oral tradition. One method of doing that is to look at what the author emphasizes. The more the author mentioned something, the more likely they were to be trying to change the narrative on that point. One point of emphasis in the book of the Watchers is that the Watchers were from heaven. It's mentioned several times throughout the text. Another point of emphasis is that they were spiritual beings and that they had eternal life. Finally, it mentions that they were holy and that they had become defiled. So, by reflecting what the author emphasizes, we can see what the oral tradition might have been. In the book of the Watchers, the Watchers were angel-type beings from heaven, but in the oral tradition, they were not, and given the limited alternatives, they were likely men on earth. This idea is further reinforced by the use of a parallelism. A parallelism is the use of successive verbal constructions which correspond in meaning, but in propaganda, Ancient authors would use them to equate two lines that were not originally equal. One example from the Bible is in Psalm 81.4, where it says, For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. In the biblical narrative, Israel and Jacob are the same person, but historically, they were two different people. You can watch my previous video, where I explain how Jacob was inserted into the Joseph narrative. Another example is in Psalm 51.18, which says, by your favor, do good to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem. Here, Zion and Jerusalem are equated as the same city, but originally they were two different cities. To learn more, you can read my blog post entitled Poetic Propaganda and the Zion That Wasn't There. With that in mind, let's turn back to the Book of the Watchers. There, we also find a parallelism which says about Enoch, and his activities had to do with the Watchers, and his days were with the Holy Ones. Here, watchers are equated with holy ones, which, from a propaganda perspective, means they were not holy ones in the oral tradition. But was the oral tradition just a myth, or was there some historical basis? I think there was a historical basis, and not only that, there was a physical artifact that was the catalyst for the oral tradition. In the Book of the Watchers, the watchers have Enoch write up a petition on their behalf. It says about Enoch, And they besought me to draw up a petition for them. And again, I wrote out your petition, and again, and your petition on their behalf shall not be granted, nor yet on your own, even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written. So it's only mentioned three times explicitly that Enoch wrote it, which barely qualifies as an emphasis. However, it's that last one, the one that says, the writing which I have written, that really seems redundant and unnecessary. This is the reason why Enoch is described as a scribe. It says, And lo, the watchers called me, Enoch the scribe. And again, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man, and scribe of righteousness. If the author made Enoch the one to write the petition, then he would need to have the ability to do it, thus making him a scribe. The book of the watchers was composed over time by several different authors. You can watch my previous video to learn more about the layers that I propose. It's the first layer that I propose that the petition of the Watchers actually existed at one time and seems to be what the oral tradition was based on. Sadly, it doesn't seem to be quoted in the text of Enoch, so it appears to already have been lost at the time of the first textual layer, existing only in the oral tradition. Since the Watchers were originally humans, it follows that the petition originally had nothing to do with them having once been in heaven. If Enoch didn't originally write the petition, this raises the possibility that Enoch was never part of the original Watchers tradition. And that is what I propose in one of my layers, that the tradition of the Watchers and the tradition of Enoch were combined into one narrative. If we take a look at that parallelism again, we can see that it serves another purpose. It's not that the activities and days don't have parallel meaning, rather this is an unnecessary detail. Previously in the text, we already know what Enoch's activities and days were spent doing. To tell us here is to emphasize the point, thus making it a point in the narrative that the author was trying to change. In other words, it's propaganda. 
If you want to see my source attributions for the entire Book of the Watchers text, I'll link to it in the description. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, no pun intended, and please like, share, and subscribe.